Hello everyone. Uh, in this movie I'm going to identify the parts of the banjo. Starting with the round part and all its components that is known as the pot assembly and obviously this large piece of wood extending out to the left is known as the banjo neck. Uh, working with the pot assembly now we have the top surface which is the banjo head. It's an 11 inch diameter piece of plastic usually with a textured uh, surface and white textured frosting. Uh, on the head, about two-thirds of the way down, is the banjo bridge made of maple, usually with an ebony top. Behind the bridge, the strings connect to the metal tailpiece. Coming around the rim from the tailpiece, we encounter an angular piece of metal known as the armrest, and then Encircling the entire rim of the banjo is a notched piece of uh, metal banding and that's known as the tension hoop, also sometimes called the stretcher band. Uh, in this tension hoop are cut a series of 24 notches evenly spaced around the rim and uh, in those notches are what we call tension hooks which pass down through uh, what is known as the flange, and we'll get to that later. Now, <clears throat> on the other side of that flange, are there are nuts threaded onto the ends of those tension hook, hooks, and by uh, tensioning those nuts, we tighten or loosen the banjo head. Now, the tension band, or tension hoop, also sits on a metal hoop. And this is actually the outer rim of the banjo head itself. The plastic connects to this metal hoop, and the stretcher band sits on top of that, pulling it down, tightening it onto the, onto the rim. So below the, the banjo head rim, we encounter a little bit of the exposed rim of the banjo, and then we come to a flat metal plating that extends out from the rim and encircles the entire banjo. And in this uh, rim, this uh, metal plating are punched uh, very large sound holes all the way around. This metal plate is known as the flange. Uh, the purpose of the flange <coughs> is to hold in place this wooden shell on the back of the banjo. This is known as the resonator. Slightly concave uh, back with a, um, <coughs> a wall, a resonator wall. And the plate, the, uh, the flange, the outer lip of the flange is seated in a groove cut in the top surface of the resonator wall. Around the flange there are four very large thumb screws. Here's one of them right there. And uh, these four thumb screws hold the resonator onto the banjo. If you unscrew those thumb screws, remove them, the back will come right off. Now <clears throat> to the neck of the banjo Starting where the neck joins the pot assembly, we have what is called the heel of the banjo, this large, large bit of the, of the, uh, of the neck. We have the, uh, the back of the neck now extending up to about two-thirds of the way up. It suddenly narrows a bit, and uh, at that point we have the fifth string tuner. From that point on, it is only four strings wide. And it comes to this area where the neck flattens and widens out, and that is known as the peg head. Installed in the peg head are four tuning pegs to tune the four strings. Coming around the front of the peg head, we have what is known as the peg head overlay, which is a veneer uh, inlaid with some mother of pearl uh, design work and a little bit of scripting sometimes, usually the name of the banjo or the banjo maker is uh, inlaid into the peghead overlay. In this case, it says Gibson. Now, also we see the four tuning posts, which are the, uh, the extension of the tuning pegs protruding through the peghead. It's to these tuning posts that the strings attach, and uh, by tuning the, uh, turning the tuner pegs, we tune our strings. Okay, now coming down the strings towards the neck itself, we encounter this large white 
piece of material, sometimes ivory, sometimes even bone. That's known as a string nut. The string nut has four slots cut into it to accept the uh, four strings that attach to the tuning posts. Behind the string nut, still on the peg head overlay, is a little plastic cover attached with two screws, and that's called the truss rod cover. Underneath that cover, you'll see, well, I wouldn't suggest going in there, but if you did, you would find a large Allen nut threaded onto a, a threaded rod that extends the entire length of the banjo neck inside the neck itself. And a luthier or instrument maker would use that to uh, straighten or put some bowing into the neck in order to raise or lower the, the height of the strings over the frets. Now, <coughs> excuse me, coming down over the, uh, over the string nut, we come out onto the fingerboard proper, or also known as the fretboard. This is uh, usually a veneer of some exotic wood, rosewood, sometimes ebony, uh, which is then glued onto the actual stock of the neck. Uh, and in this uh, fretboard are inset the actual metal strips that we know as frets. And they're in a certain pattern. It's a little bit wide at the, uh, up near the peg head. And as they approach the pot assembly, the, the gap between them narrows. That's a, a log logarithmic scale that uh, produces uh, the intonation of our strings. Now, <clears throat> also uh, inset into the fingerboard are what are known as markers, inlay markers. Uh, quite often it's very fancy uh, inlay work, mother of pearl, little designs and they mark certain frets. And on all banjos, you'll find an inlay marker, be it fancy or plain, at fret three, five, seven, 10, 12, and repeating that pattern, three more up, 15, 17, 19, and if you had a fret 22, it'd be one there too. All right, now this, the distance between the string nut and the bridge is the vibrating length of the strings. Um, now, coming up from the string nut, we number our frets, fret one, two, three, four, all the way up to 21 or so. And uh, coming in at the fifth fret, we happen to have the fifth string. There's no relation between the two, it's just a coincidence that the fifth fret and the fifth string uh, come in at the same place. In line with the fifth fret, you will see a little piece of uh, ivory or bone slotted over which the fifth string passes, and that's the fifth string nut. Behind the fifth string nut is the fifth string tuning peg. Okay. Now, the strings of the banjo are numbered, starting from the fifth string. The short one is string number five. The next one, four, three, two, and one. The banjo neck has also two sides. It has a bass side and a treble side. The bass side of the banjo neck is that side with the fifth string on it. And the treble side is the side where string one is, opposite that of string five. The banjo bridge likewise has a bass side at where fifth, the fifth string stretches over it and a treble side where string one passes over it. Now, also in some banjos you'll find underneath the fifth string, little hmm, capo nails. They're like little spikes set into the fingerboard and uh, they allow us to capo that string at various places. Like uh, now I just made that into a, I fretted it up at two frets and capoed it off at the seventh fret. And I have an A note now, take it out Take it out, he said, and it's back to the G note. And uh, that's just another thing that it doesn't come standard on banjos. You have to get a luthier to put those things in, but uh, not to worry about that for quite some time yet. I believe that's about the whole uh, story of the banjo. Um, so I guess we'll see you in the next movie.